Hello everybody and welcome to part 8 of the Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners course. And in this video we will talk about the mysterious 3D cursor. So it already appeared in the previous parts and now we are gonna focus on it and learn what it actually does. So that's probably the question you ask yourself every morning. Why do I need a 3D cursor in Blender? And it's actually a pretty useful feature. Um, and it's not that common amongst the 3D software that you have stuff like this. So a 3D cursor, what it basically does, it's like you could tell Blender, hey, I stick my finger on a monitor here. Could you Blender please do something around this area that I'm pointing in right now? So let's say you point somewhere here and you would like Blender to do something around this point. Um, a practical example, imagine uh, stretching a rubber band. So you hold it with your fingers in one place and then you stretch it with your other hand. And the 3D cursor would be a place where your fingers actually hold uh, the rubber. So let's just visualize it. Uh, when you select a cube and use a scale tool, you can switch to the pivot point as a 3D cursor. And now you can see that the scale operation actually starts here, but it doesn't go any further to the right. So when I uh, grab the hun handle here, you can see that the effect we have is actually, it looks like we are stretching the, the cube. So again, if I now left click here somewhere, I can do it like this. When I switch to rotation, you can see the pivot point is around the object um, bottom, right? So again, if I if I do a free rotation, again the 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 rot like the pivot point is around 3D cursor. So it's a pretty pretty useful thing. Um, let's say we we moved our model somewhere here, and we would like to stretch it even more. So we can do it just like that. Let's say we rotate it a little bit and we can place it like this and again stretch it. And the 3D cursor, uh, the good, cool thing about it is that it snaps to the surface. So when I click with my left mouse button here, uh, I obviously probably didn't mention, but you, you have to select it here <laughs> so, so it works. So when I click uh, around the, the, the 3D viewport with my lef left mouse button and uh, the 3D cursor snaps to the surfaces of the objects. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, from what you've just seen you might think a 3D cursor is a rather uh, like a very organic and not a very precise tool but in reality, it's exactly the opposite. You can make a very, very precise uh, transformations using the 3D cursor. And the thing you need for that is the snapping tool, but not the traditional snap tool, uh, which is available here. I will describe it maybe later uh, during the edit mode uh, tutorials. But now you can access uh, another uh, snap tool uh, which is uh, centered around 3D cursor. So to do that you just right click and you see you have a snap uh, option here. So you can see multiple um, multiple positions here. So uh, the bottom part is centered around the 3D cursor. So you can snap a cursor to select it. Let's see what it does. If I have if I have my cursor selected here and I left click, it just follows. So I need to switch. Let's say I select a lamp and now I right click, snap and cursor to selected. 
So you can see the cursor moved to the object I actually had selected. Wow, that's a surprise. What happens if I select multiple objects? It goes somewhere to the middle and that's going to be a point where the gizmo would otherwise appear. Um, as you know, if we have a median point, the gizmo will appear somewhere, like the blender calculates uh, a middle point for all the selected objects. So if I deselect the cube, the gizmo moves here and so on. So same, same happens if I select the object and snap a cursor to selection. Um, what else can we do? Let's see. Um, we can snap cursor to grid and if I do this, well, you might think nothing really happens. Snap grid. Oh, the cursor moved a little bit, but why is it here? And the answer to that would be checking the other uh, the other view angle. So if we switch to the top view, you can see the cursor is actually aligned to the grid. If we go to the right view, we see it's exactly the same and same in the back view. So if I move the cursor around the 3D space, you can see it's also, it's obvious, obviously moving uh, around the space in general. And when I right click and snap it to the grid, you can you can't see this in the in the perspective or in the orthographic view in 3D but in the side views and in the in those aligned views this is uh, pretty pretty much visible so again if i if i move the cursor around like this let's say somewhere like somewhere somewhere here and now Again, snap it to the grid. It will snap to those um, thicker lines of the grid, not those little ones. So you can see, yeah, it's happening here. Another way the cursor works. So let's let's just delete those objects <coughs> and multiply multiply the beloved cube. And as you already know, uh, the way the active object, uh, active selection object works is this one with the brighter outline. So we can again select snap tool and move the cursor to the active object. Yeah, sorry, this one. Um, so now a little bit more practical approach. Um, let's say we have this nice cube. Uh, I will shrink the viewport. Let's say we have this nice cube which is scaled up and we want to align uh, this cube to this one. So instead of just um, moving it around like this, right? Uh, we can use a 3D cursor for that. How about that? Uh, let's just select it. Click somewhere on the face so you can see the cursor is here. We are pointing our virtual finger to this position. And now with this object selected, we can go snap and selection to cursor. And you can see Blender did the entire operation uh, for us, of, uh, of course, the, cur uh, the the cube is like a little bit. It's synced into this bigger cube, and that's because the object center is within this dot here. You might think, well, is it possible to have this little dotted center, perhaps on the on the edge of the object? Well, yes, that's possible, but we are going to discuss it later so you're not overwhelmed by the Blender knowledge. 
Um, right now, let's just let's just focus on how the cursor works. So again, I can click um, I can click it somewhere here. Just remember to have it selected. Now, I will select this object and again snap and again right click, snap and selection to cursor. So I think it's pretty pretty useful when you're moving things around let's say let's create a plane and you can see it also creates around the 3d cursor the newly added stuff will be added at the 3d cursor um yeah by the way uh, another thing uh what what if you want to have your stuff added in the scene center like as as it used to work in the previous videos you just need to snap the 3D cursor back to the scene center and you do this by again right click snap and cursor to world origin so now it's back in its central point and now whatever you add to the scene is created here in the middle so let's delete those elements and let's add a plane scale it up a little bit and now we can play with the cursor again so I, I want to move this huge cube here just right click selection to cursor now I wanna put this cube on top of that I select it right click selection to cursor and again I click I select the cursor click here select another object snap selection to cursor so i'm just putting them one on top of another of course i can then align the objects uh, more precisely but you i i think you get the idea how we can use the cursor now and to end this video another shortcut to learn instead of just uh, right clicking which is actually this is a feature of a new blender which is very cool in my opinion so you have a snap tool under the right click and just here you can also use the shift s key to launch this pi menu and here you have multiple options for the snapping uh, 3d cursor around the scene and objects around the 3d cursor so let's say again I put the cursor here, shift S, and I select, well, selection to cursor, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it works. So again, my advice is to play around with it, uh, test it by yourself, break things apart, and enjoy your work with Blender, and see you in the next video.